project for today is to uh, do a more thinning and weeding in our woodlot. We have here a pretty nice yellow birch. In the middle here we have another yellow birch, but he certainly hasn't got the same crown as the uh, birch on the right. And to the left we have a red maple. Very desirable climate change tree. Yellow birch is a bit iffy. So in order to keep everybody healthier, uh, we're going to take out this smaller one in the middle and just give them a bit more space. By totally freeing up a tree uh, on all four sides, which is not the case here, but you can increase uh, the growth of that tree up to four times from when it's being suppressed on all four sides. Amazing difference. So this is a little closer view. Uh, keeper yellow birch. Uh, begone yellow birch. Uh, Windblown fir will clear him out. Another fir right here that will, uh, just because I have the chainsaw and right here and another one here, we'll just clean those out. Uh, major purpose, they're not competing with anything at this point. On the other hand, if we get rid of them, more sunlight directly on the ground, and maybe we'll get something else besides a fur. I had uh, talked about this in a previous video and apparently screwed it up. When you're looking at trees to assess their health and whether they should be a tree that you want to keep on your woodlot, uh, besides the species issue, most uh, sources I've looked at suggest 30 to 40 percent of the tree is crowned. So how I go about trying to judge that is take my fingers, highlight the top and the bottom of the crown, and then come down 
one. Well, that's one, two, three, and less than four. So that's probably about a 30% crowd. Loggers have a reputation of being a pretty hard working group of individuals. But actually, in my experience in the woodlot, cutting the tree down is the easy part. If you've dropped the tree across a road, you need to clean all that debris out of your path and do something with it. This is not bad. Uh, it's mostly fairly thin tops from the uh, yellow birch, a white birch here, and a bit of fir. Uh, but if you or I had dropped a, a very large white spruce across this road, we would possibly wish that we had never done that. The second place uh, where the work comes in is that now that I'm starting to uh, buck those uh, tree bits up, they got to get carried out of there. And uh, when you're old and tired and bent and busted, uh, it's extra hard. So that's where the real work in the woodlot comes. It's, it's not in the tree felling. It's what you have to do after. So I uh, carried out this one uh, four foot length of yellow birch from up in here. It's 20-25 uh, feet or so from uh, the road. And after carrying that one out, I kind of said to myself, don't be a jackass. This is uh, heavier than what you feel like carrying today. And so I just start cutting it up in single blocks and uh, we'll bring it out one little chunk at a time and live for another day. Besides uh, working in the woods, it's always nice to uh, rest in the woods and just enjoy some peace and quiet, chance to look around and see things that maybe you haven't seen before. And of course, keep an eye out on what could be sneaking up on you. Anyhow, it's, uh, it's important to take a break and just simply enjoy what it is you're, you're doing. Okay, so first we had to get rid of the brush. That's work number one. Then we had to haul the blocks out or whatever length we decide to out. That's work number two. And then work number three, and I'm stripping down here to get ready for it. Uh, but don't worry, I did not bring out a speedo. Uh, is the axe.
yellow birch can be nice, but sometimes it can also be very nasty. This is being very nice. Okay, next to final step is uh, loading up Ralphie with the uh, some of the wood that we've harvested and then of course I'll have to unload them. Mama deer just standing along the side of the road. Can't get any closer right now. There was a young one that was just off the road uh, back a hundred feet. I suspect they're probably traveling together, just not close together. As long as you're in a vehicle or have a chainsaw, deer just don't seem to be afraid of you. They know you're busy with something else. You're not stalking or hunting them. I hope you're not eating any of our good seedlings. Oh, uh, point of interest. Uh, a deer, five to seven pounds of browse, will eat a five to seven pounds of browse every day. Uh, if that's all seedlings, it takes uh, 700 seedlings to make a pound. So there, if you say five to seven pounds, say six is an average, they're eating roughly 4,200 seedlings or tips a day. Oh, sweetheart.
So, here we have uh, nearly a full raffi load of wood. Uh, I'll put up the uh, tailgate and fill in some of the gaps before actually calling it a complete load. But you may be interested in, uh, in this. I'm applying to the International Weights and Measures Standard. Uh, may have to go to the United Nations. I'm proposing that a Ralphie load become the official designation of uh, a work unit for old people. So, you know, so that we can all say, hey, I went out and did a Ralphie load of uh, wood today, or I did one and a half loads, whatever. And everybody would know what we were talking about. Thanks for watching.